Hi folks, welcome back to Card Country. My name is Billy Carter. Today we're gonna to go over a few things as far as you know, some uh, basic cleaning of firearms. The basic cleaning supplies you need are really not gonna be a very expensive investment for you. Uh, usually about 30 bucks will get you more involved with the necessary products that you'll need to have for basic cleaning, oiling, and lubrication of any kind of firearm. These particular ones are made by Hoppies. We, they're very inexpensive, uh, something that will last a long time for you while you take care of it. Each cleaning kit will contain an actual cleaning rod. The actual rod has different tips that you will put on for different applications as far as for putting patches down the barrel once you get some solvent inside and so forth and so on. Then also we we'll use phosphor bronze brush that will be used to clean the actual barrel. The, what I normally do, which I know if you talk to 100 different gun enthusiasts, there's gonna be 100 different answers as far as what what the right way and the wrong ways to clean a gun. So I basically would go over what, what I consider the fundamentals as far as I know, and something that will be good enough to get you through, through the day. This is the basic start with an actual phosphor bronze brush. These are coming in different calibers as far as the, the, the 3357 will cover your nine millimeter also. So this one particular setup will do a lot of different guns very easily and quickly. This is a Brother 92, nine millimeter. We're gonna go through the basic tear down and then basic cleaning and lubrication of this firearm right now. Always, always, as always, you will, you will double check and be sure that, that there's no ammunition in the gun, no, no mags in the well, and no ammunition in the chamber. You will close the gun, close it like so. And then on the, this particular bread is one of the, probably one of the most simple ones to take apart. Okay, the basic disassembly of a Breda 92 is this. You will take and you'll push on this little lever on the right side of the gun, right above the trigger guard, and then you will roll it over and you will roll this, this half moon around to a 90 degree mark. And you pull everything off the front. At this point in time, you will take the actual guide rod out and then you'll take the barrel out also. You have four basic components of the gun, not including the magazine. Uh, we typically recommend that if you want to go any more deeper clean oil than this, as far as any more bits and pieces, that you get a professional gunsmith involved as far as take the small pieces out. It's not something we normally recommend people who, who are just doing this every now and then to, to get involved with. It's not something we would recommend new shooters to get involved with as far as taking the smaller pieces off the actual gun itself. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and clean the, clean the barrel in this little 92 and nine millimeter right now. What we'll do is we'll put a little bit of Hoppy's number nine on that brush. Pull it through several times, back and forth. So that doesn't damage like the side of the barrel at all? No, no. Uh, the phosphor bronze is a is a very soft material. The metal that your barrel is made with is a super hard, so there's no way you can damage the barrel by using a phosphor bronze brush. Then at that point in time, you'll take one of different kind of an actual device. This is a, they make several different versions of, of patch holders. Some that some of the push straight through, and then some that you have to bring back and forth. This kit comes with a couple of different size patches, so you take one patch out and you push this down through the axle thimble and pull it through all the way through, and you run this down the barrel, kind of a little back and forth like that. And as you can tell. That barrel needs more cleaning, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but we don't have time to go through the full process. So what I would usually do would be go back with the brush and repeat the brush, the brush uh, situation several times along the way, and then go back until you come out with clean patches. Okay, and that way you know that your barrel is actually clean at that point in time. And then at the end of the process, you don't ever want to leave your barrel completely dry. So I take one, one more patch. And thread it through. And then 
put just a tad bit of lubricating oil on it. And then run that down through the barrel also. Thereby you have some lubrication inside your barrel because you, you don't want your barrel to rust in time if it gets too dry and stays dry for a long period of time like that. Once you clean everything out of the actual barrel as far as the, all, all the powder residue, all the actual copper residue, everything like that, the actual metal is dry at that point in time. It has nothing on top to protect it. So if you do not put some kind of lubrication on it, it if it sits up for a long period of time without being used, it can rust inside the barrel. Then at this point, we want to, we can take um, the frame part of the gun you, you see is pretty much self-explanatory. It's not that critically messed up at the moment. So you can probably take a rag and put a little bit of CLP on it. and just wipe the exterior part of the frame. Okay, and do the same thing for the exterior of the barrel itself. Then the slide itself also. Okay, so everything is now pretty much been wiped down, cleaned up to an satisfactory mode. At this point, we want to lubricate the firearm and, put, and reassemble it. We'll start with our basic components again. So, Pro Gold Grease. Uh, grease is something that's going to be thicker naturally than oil. And what the problem you run into is as you shoot a firearm, as it gets hot, the oil, if you only have just oil on the gun, the, the oil will burn off, meaning that you won't have any lubrication. Your gun, your gun will be very dry at that point in time when that happens. And this is something we do sell at Cartridge, Pro Gold, Pro Gold Grease. I've used it for many years now. And what you want to do with the grease is you want to put it on the actual metal bearing surfaces where the actual metal is going to meet. The grease points are going to be here, here, and here. And same thing on this side, because wherever the actual, the actual slide is going to make contact with the actual barrel itself. Okay. The, or the frame itself, I'm sorry. It's like where metal is rubbing on metal. Right. So a little bit goes a long ways. You don't need a ton of it. Put like a quarter that much on mine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and what I do at this point in time is I go ahead and slide the slide back on with nothing on there, and then just kind of work it in a little bit as far as to make sure that all the all the bits and pieces are getting getting some some extra coating there. At this point, also what I do is I take just some regular oil and give it a little squirt. The COP, which is a cleaner preservative and also a lubricant situation. And give it a little bit. There again, just kind of get some on it. Okay, at this point in time, we can go ahead and start reassembling the gun. So we will start with the slide and put the barrel back in place. There's only one way for it to fit. Can you put it in like upside down or anything like that? Accidentally? It's impossible. There's only one way this can go back in, basically. So at this point in time, you're going to push your actual recoil spring back in. Um, the spring's going to go towards the front of the gun. Of course, be careful you're with this because if, it, if, it, if you lose it, it can fly across the room and hit somebody in the head. Oh. Okay, at that point in time, you get kind of a straight line with it. Actually, everything looks like it's pretty straight and good, and good to go. 
slide, slide, slide back on the gun, pull back, and all you'll need to do is push that lever forward. At this point in time, gun is well lubed and nice and should be either ready for your next shooting trip or ready to go you know, into the drawer or whatever you need for your self-protection. Very well done. Okay. At this time, we're gonna go ahead and go through some of the more common guns as far as just basic disassembly. This is the Glock, uh, model 19 Gen 4. As always, with any kind of guns you're gonna take apart, you need to be sure that the gun is unloaded so you always visibly look, look to be sure there's nothing in the chamber itself. You'll take the magazine out of the well and you look and be sure that there's no mags in the well and there's no shells in the gun itself so it is clear at that point in time. Glocks are one of the, more, one of the easiest ones to take apart. You'll be sure, there again, you want to double check you've got no rounds in the gun because the first thing you have to do is you have to dry fire this gun, like that, okay? So at this point, you have a very small little piece on this end and a very small little piece on that end. You will- Go ahead and hold it up, show them what you're talking about. This little piece right here is exposed right here and you have a little piece exposed right here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your left thumb on that piece and your right, your right forefinger is gonna be going on the, the right side of the gun on that piece. You're gonna push back ever so slightly on the axle top of the slide to move the slide back about an eighth of an inch. Then you're gonna push down on both sides at one time of that piece that you're pushing on and then everything comes off the front. This, the actual, your recoil spring comes out and your barrel comes out, just like so. Okay, reassemble process. Your first thing is the barrel's gonna have to go in. There's no way, there's no way for the barrel to go back in any other way than the right way. This is totally designed just like that. Everything falls right into place, okay? So it's kind of locked in. Your, your recoil springs on one way it can go. Here again, be careful that there is spring tension, so don't point it at your face whenever you're doing that kind of stuff. Basic lubrication process, if I go through real quickly for you, the same basic thing on, on all of them. You have four points of contact on the Glock here, 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 and here. And if you look at this actual slide itself, you'll see the gold and the gold and the gold and the gold. That's where the actual grease goes on that gun. At this point, you will take and you'll see where the actual points of metal contact go inside the frame there. You will kind of push it to this point. Once you get to here, all you simply do is push straight through. And now the gun is operational again. All right, folks, we're gonna go through a six hour this time. Uh, not quite as simple as the actual Glock, but pretty close. You're just gonna be sure that there's no mags in the well. And at this point in time, you will see this lever up front right here. Can you turn the gun around and show it Yeah, this piece is gonna rotate around 90 degrees like this, okay? At that point in time, you will push back on the slide, thereby releasing it, and then everything comes right off the front, lickety split. Same basic thing as the other ones, just your recoil spring comes out, and your barrel comes out, okay? So this is the Colt Python, uh, one of the older model guns, but one of my favorites by far, I love these guns. Um, Cleaning is going to be very simple uh, as far as these go. You're not going to take anything off the gun. You don't take the cylinders out or anything like that. You're going to work with basically as you do the other guns. Okay, let's go through some basic uh, cleaning of, of this Colt Python revolver here. Uh, kind of start out with the same thing we did before with the phosphor bronze brush. You're going to put a little bit of powder solvent on the brush itself and then you'll run it through the barrel. Always try to keep the actual rod centered in the barrel so you're not rubbing against your actual, uh, the outside of your lands and grooves and you'll continue to do the same thing with the cylinders themselves. Get a brush, get a patch.
So basically you're going to take the actual brush, the actual patches, and you're going to run the actual patch down the barrel, kind of being sure you're kind of wiping out all the actual powder solvent, so forth and so on in the barrel itself. And you do the same thing with each individual cylinder. Looks like you keep your python cleaner than your Beretta. What's that about? <laughs> well, <laughs> little difference in little difference in guns. The, the Python is kind of like the Cadillac of the gun market, and the other ones are going to be more of utility, utilitarian grade type stuff. Sure, sure. At this point, you will take the actual another dry patch, put a little bit of the oil on the actual patch. And you will run the patch down through the barrel, thereby putting a little bit of lubrication inside the barrel. And then all the cylinders up again. At this point in time, I put a little bit more of the COP on a rag. And be sure to wipe the, the, the complete exterior of the gun down. Because Especially being a blue steel gun, not a stainless gun, it will rust if it doesn't have some kind of oil on the actual metal itself. If it depends upon the humidity and so forth in your house or, your, or in your gun vault or wherever you keep your guns at. So be sure you put some kind of oil on the guns to keep them lubricated and you should check that periodically. Uh, sometimes, you know, they are, they, with, with temperature changes that we have in the Houston area, especially around here, can be tough on guns for sure. At this point also, I'm gonna put a little bit of actual oil on the cylinder, cylinder wheel like we talked about. And then a little bit down side of that crane. Then wipe off the excess. There you go. One pretty nice, clean Colt Python. All right, Cowboy, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Always remember that if you ever shop, shot, or hunted with us, you're part of the Cards Country family. Adios, till next time. Thanks. <laughs>